Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining uh, today's office hours on contact tracing with uh, Apex and Oracle Spatial. Um, to quote uh, Steve Harvey from the American TV show uh, Family Feud, uh, we've got a good one for you today. Um, this session will be recorded like all other Apex office hours, so you can always share this with someone uh, later. And if you have questions at any time, uh, please post these questions in the Q&A and not in the chat, okay? So my name is Joel Coleman. I'm on the Oracle Apex product development team, and I'm based out of Columbus, Ohio in the USA. I'm joined by the uh, ever-enthusiastic uh, Karsten Zarsky um, from the Apex product development team, and he's from Munich, Germany. And we have two special guests with us today from the Oracle Spatial product development team. Um, first is uh, Dan Geringer, um, who's a spatial solution specialist on the spatial product development team. And he's based near Western Virginia, outside of Washington, DC. Um, and also a big hat tip to Dan. Um, I think I've been at Oracle forever, and Dan's been at Oracle one year longer than me. So kudos to you, Dan. Um, and our, our second special guest is David Lapp, who's a product manager on the Oracle spatial team. And he's based out of the Boston, Massachusetts area. Um, just as a quick promotion for next month's office hours, um, this was actually a great suggestion by Anthony Rayner on our team. He's based out of Plymouth, England, and it was his, his suggestion to host uh, uh, an office hours on the beginner's guide to Apex. Um, as you can probably tell, there's an enormous amount of interest and success with Oracle Apex, which begets other interest. And for those who are curious or those who are getting started with Apex, the office hours for next month will be um, an introduction to Apex, how to get connected to the community, um, and where to get started with Apex. Okay, so that also ought to be a good one. Apex is a feature of the Oracle database, uh, uh, and it's available everywhere. So if you're licensed for um, the Oracle database in the cloud or on-premises, you're entitled to use and run Oracle Apex and run Apex apps. There are free versions of Oracle Database, an on-premises version called uh, XE or Express Edition, um, and there's even a free version uh, in the cloud, a free autonomous database, uh, completely free, and Apex is part of that too. And I like to say that this is power to the people. But did you know that there is also this magnificent capability in this wonderfully rich application development platform called Oracle Database for spatial data management called Oracle Spatial. And this used to be a four cost option for the Oracle Database, but as of December 2019, you no longer need a special license for spatial. It can be used uh, in all on-premises editions and all Oracle Cloud uh, databases. It's included, just like Apex is. And it's even available uh, for free in the free on-premises Oracle Database XE, as well as also on the cloud um, in the free autonomous database. And it's just like Apex. It's amazing functionality out of the box. And we on the Apex team see a lot of synergy between these two technologies. And what you're going to see today um, is just the beginning. And I have in the QR code there in the corner, um, the link to the blog post with this announcement from Oracle saying how it's available in all editions of Oracle Database. Um, I want to call attention to the website apex.world, and there uh, is a special section there for COVID-19 apps. And I just have nothing but high praise for everyone in the Apex community um, who they are delivering solutions quickly um, to fulfill an immediate need. And this list of apps is growing seemingly every day. So I could not be more proud of the Apex community. And there's a uh, something transformational happening uh, at, at Oracle. I, I have a front row seat to it. I, I see it all. And um, not only in conjunction with the Apex community, but I'd like to think that we on the Apex team and also on the Oracle spatial teams, we are part of uh, the new Oracle. And this is all part of making Oracle cool again, or Mocha. And with that, I will pass it to David Latt, please. And Joel, if you could confirm, you see my slide. Absolutely. Okay, so 
Thank you, Joel. And uh, you know, everything happens somewhere, and that's why spatial is so important in general. Uh, and not only does everything happen somewhere, it also happens at some time. And so we're going to talk about the spatial features of Oracle Database. And as we get into the, the contact tracing scenario that we're going to be focusing on, we're really talking about, um, about space and location relationships and time and how we're able to bring those together um, with features of the Oracle Database. So first, uh, to set the context of the spatial features of the Oracle database, we manage uh, both the most basic, elemental, intuitive sorts of uh, spatial types. So points, lines, polygons, points like uh, asset locations, lines like utility lines, polygons like uh, sales territories, for example, as native spatial types in the database. And additionally, as we sort of move around the, the rim of this diagram, you can see that we also manage natively in the database a wide variety of other spatial types and uh, associated um, sort of uh, operations on those types. So everything from uh, all forms of geospatial imagery, satellite uh, imagery, aerial uh, drone imagery, 3D data, um, uh, connected uh, networks, so on and so forth. Lots and lots of uh, different forms of, of uh, uh, spatial types to meet a wide variety of scenarios, all managed natively in the Oracle database as types. And then across the top, you see what's listed as a set of deployable components. And along with those uh, in database features, the, the spatial features also come with a set of these applications that, that um, uh, support a bunch of the common sorts of business functions that we want to have people do against that data. So things like uh, map creating uh, map visualizations uh, in web applications, address geocoding, and, and so forth. So collectively, this is all uh, makes up the spatial features of the database. Uh, okay, so to bring this down to the, the real sort of core intuitive level from the perspective of, of uh, you know, what you do uh, um, in terms of queries and asking spatial types of questions, spatial provides a, uh, a in addition to these types, a series of uh, uh, spatial APIs, spatial SQL APIs that let you ask all kinds of location-based questions. So uh, at its most basic, we can do things like, in this example, ask a question like, which of our assets are within 10 miles of a hurricane path? By storing the assets and the hurricane paths using a native spatial type in the database, this becomes just like any other SQL statement that, uh, that you would write. And there's no new language to learn. There's only this additional set of SQL functions that, that uh, handle spatial. So load the spatial types into the database, ask all kinds of spatial questions with the, the same type of SQL that you're used to writing anyway. Now, that's an example of a very, very basic SQL function within distance. And overall within spatial, within the spatial SQL and PL SQL API in the database, there are tons and tons of those very simple uh, intuitive types of, uh, of um, uh, functions available for things like co uh, uh, comparing spatial relationships, which locations are inside of a region, which are the nearest, which of these lines cross through an area, all the types of spatial relationships and measurement type questions that, that you might ask. What's the area of overlap of two regions? All that uh, kind of stuff. But there's also a wide variety of specialized, more advanced uh, packages and functions that are, that are um, that are uh, meant for more advanced use cases, hundreds and hundreds of these. So whether it's the it, whether it's sort of the, the basic types of, of uh, use cases, uh, I want to see my business information on a map and understand the spatial relationship to them, or more advanced types of uh, scenarios, city modeling and scenario building and and so forth. It's all in the the uh, spatial SQL and PL SQL API. I mentioned that there are a series of deployable components for spatial, and one of them was mapping. And so just to highlight that a bit, the map visualization component is one of those deployable components, comes with spatial, and it is a web mapping server. Um, and it includes 
several APIs. One of them is a JavaScript client API for just creating lightweight, um, very nice looking interactive mapping applications. Uh, the map visualization component in general is meant to allow you to create map, map visualizations and applications from data coming out of the uh, spatial features of the database, as well as combining it with other standards-based formats and sources. And it does a lot more than that. And I have the little um, barcode there at the bottom for uh, getting all the details and more information about the map visualization component in terms of its overall functionality. And there, there's a lot there. But in, in the context of, of Apex, just like I showed you a simple SQL statement, a within distance SQL statement, which of course is going to fit right into Apex because it's just SQL. Similarly, with the map visualization component, specifically this um, JavaScript API that's known as Oracle Maps, that's the Oracle Maps is the uh, JavaScript client API that's part of this map this component. I highlight it because that's what you're going to end up seeing uh, as a really nice uh, component to plug into an Apex app and be able to consume and, and uh, data from a query of the database, get spatial data, get it onto a map. So I highlight that and I also point an arrow down to the bottom because it just so happens that there is a um, another Ask Tom session after this one that's dedicated uh, um, in part to covering that particular API. You're going to see it uh, in at work later on in this session. So finally, uh, in terms of these spatial features that we saw, how does they how do they specifically relate to Apex at the at the broad level? Well, first of all, it's just SQL. It's just a bunch of data types and SQL and PL SQL. Therefore, it drops right into the work you do in in Apex. So the 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 regions that you create with SQL content for what, whatever kind of visualization, reporting, mapping, you can include proximity and area and distance calculations and containment. All the spatial relationship stuff just fits right in. Apex, the uh, Apex uh, API also has a package called Apex Spatial that provides a bunch of convenience functions that make the routine things that you could do with some more SQL coding just sort of turnkey. And that's important and helpful in general, but in particular because of the proxy user framework of Apex, uh, which can cause a little bit of uh, extra complexity in some of the um, uh, configuration option uh, operations we have these packages really simplify all that specifically for the apex environment so these are, are really nice to have working with spatial in apex and then finally the uh, apex uh, set of showcase um, uh, sample applications in includes a geolocation showcase again one of the bundled sample applications and it has all kinds of great functionality and sort of blueprints and templates that are demonstrated, but that you can use to consume and, and work with spatial in Apex. And that's what you're gonna see the demo we do is adapted out of that application. So that's the, the sort of the setup for what the spatial side is. So what we're gonna do now is hand it over to my colleague, Dan Geringer, who's gonna talk about how we've implemented contact tracing using these spatial features, as well as other features of Oracle Database. So Dan, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Thanks, David. Everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Share my slides. That look okay? Look great. Okay, good deal. Thanks, David. Um, just to add um, a little bit to what David said about the spatial functionality in the database, um, it actually, it runs in the database. So it leverages all the enterprise scalable and manageable features of the database as well. So including this new uh, contact tracing API that I'm gonna be discussing today. So my name is Dan Geringer. I'm part of the Oracle Spatial and Graph um, development team, and this contact tracing API that I'll be talking about today, as Joel mentioned, is included in every Oracle database edition. Dan? Is, is, yes. Uh, we're not seeing your slides. We are not. Thank you. There we go. How's that? 
But, uh, uh, yeah, just put in presentation mode, you'll be all set. Yep, trying. There you go. Better? Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Thanks, Jim. All right. Just like um, Joel said in the beginning, you know, the, this contact tracing API that I'm going to be talking about today is included in um, every Oracle database edition as because it's part of Oracle Spatial and Graph. So what is proximity and time-based contact tracing? Right? Find people that shared space at the same time and report metrics like duration, right? And I've got a couple of examples here. Um, you might be a hospital or a company and you can ask employees possibly to opt into collecting their position while they're at work. If someone calls in sick, that company or hospital can identify all the employees that were in six feet of that sick person over the last week, not only who was in contact, but how long were they in contact? In other words, report a metric like duration. Duration is a key reporting metric. Um, once again, this is not just a, what I call a pandemic type um, functionality. There are other use cases for it too. For example, um, sensors you know, can be put on animals in the wild, collecting their positions, determine if animals shared the same space at the same time and how long were they together, right? And things like that. So you can probably think of lots of other different types of applications where you just wanna know if two moving objects were in the same place at the same time. Right, so tracking data collects the position and time of moving objects and proximity and time-based contact tracing, which I'm gonna be talking more about, can be, for, can be performed on any tracking data. So I'm gonna go into more details on how the actual, what the actual API does. So proximity alone, so when you're doing contact, or proximity and time-based contact tracing, proximity alone is not enough. So if we were gonna match points that are within six feet of each other and who's also coincide in time, on the left side, I've got two tracks, the top one and the bottom one, and you can see I've got circles around the pairs of points because they're all in proximity of each other. So those could be considered proximity alone matches. But on the right side, those same points, if you look at the, the date, the timestamps, right, 813 and 822, they're about nine minutes apart. So even though proximity-wise, the points match, time-wise, they don't. So here we have a series <clears throat> of two tracks of data where they have no matches. The key is correlating both the spatial match and the temporal match, right? So now we're gonna look at some other, some other examples. So here we have two tracks. We have user two on the bottom, user 11 on the top, and we wanna perform a contact tracing for user two. In other words, user two in blue, I wanna see if anybody has come in contact with user two within six feet and within, a, um, within six feet and at the same time. What you're gonna notice is when points are reported for moving objects, very rarely, so, so you have user 11 here looks like a good candidate for a match, but very rarely, almost never, are you gonna get times exactly matching on tracks, right? So here you have one at one, p.m. and 28 seconds, and here you have one at 1 p.m. So they're, 20, they're almost 30 seconds apart. So when you're doing contact-based, time-based uh, contact tracing, proximity and time-based contact tracing, for the temporal piece, it's important to have a little bit of a sliding window when you're comparing the times. So here we have an API that I'm gonna show you a little later, there's a configurable time tolerance. In other words, even if they're, the points are 30 seconds apart, let's consider them a match. So here we've got a series of red points that matched blue points. And even this one matched because it's within 30 seconds, right? And then you start getting into ones that don't match either proximity or time-wise. People start going in their own direction. Once you start getting these matches, so once again, user two at the bottom, we're looking out for all the contact for time and proximity based matches and candidate uh, user 11 on the top looks like a good candidate and as we're getting these matches we, what we, what we want to do is start computing a metric a very important metric it's called duration how long were they in contact so that you can report that so here we have the first point 
second, third, fourth, and fifth. So you have a series of five points that actually matched. Then you've got a series of ones that didn't match. And later in the day, so these are all about 1 p.m. matches. Later in the evening, so these two users separated. And later in the evening, around 8 p.m., they came back together and they started matching again. So we have is basically two chains or two segments of matches on the same day. The tracking data in this example has two chains. <clears throat> and what we have is another configurable parameter. I call it the chaining tolerance. If two points are within a chaining tolerance, let's say 60 seconds, accumulate the duration, right? If you think about it, you need at least two points to accumulate duration because you need to be able to subtract one time from the other. You could have a contact that could come in very quickly and then leave. You might have a single point as a, as, as, as a match. In that case, we do report the single point, but a single point won't have a duration It'll have a duration of zero, but at least we identified that there was a match. But in this case, we have two tracks at two parts of the day. At 1 p.m., we have a series of these five points. At 8 p.m., you have these, these four points. So in total, we in the API, you're gonna see, we can either report back to you the two segments individually of two, two minute and 40 second duration, and then a second segment as a one minute and 48 duration, as two separate rows, each with the geometry associated. So you'll, you can see the actual location of when that segment um, had the common matches. So the one way we can do is a two separate rows, or we have another way of sending you back the data is sending it to you back in a single row. So both of these in a single row would show a duration of four minutes and 28 seconds but it would come back still with the geometry, but the geometry would be disconnected over here. So we can do it both ways. But the key here is a mechanism for accumulating direction, duration and this para configurable parameter of chaining tolerance saying that two points have to be within a certain time to actually accumulate. In other words, you would not want to accumulate, think about it, you would not want to accumulate a duration between 1 p.m and 8 p.m. That would add seven hours of when people weren't really in true contact. So let's talk a little bit about the data model for this tracking API. It's a really simple data model. It's a six, six, six column table of which some columns are optional. So you have your user ID, which is a, a numeric unique number. You have a sequence number. So for every point in the track, you can you, you assign it a number, a sequence number. So user one in this example has three points it's reporting, one, two, and three, and a capture date, a timestamp for each one. Okay, and then here's the next user, user eight. Oops, sorry about that. So user eight, he's got two points and their timestamps. You've got the location of each timestamp. We have another column called data's number. And I'm gonna talk about that in another slide as an optimization. It's just the capture date as a normalized number referenced to some reference date. And I'll explain that. It's basically used for an optimization. And then optionally, some GPS tracking data when it's being collected has an accuracy associated with it. Where zero means it's very accurate data. There's no question that that point is exactly where people are saying it is, where the sensor said it was. And, um, but something might have an accuracy of three plus or minus three meters. Something might be very inaccurate, like 45, where it's plus or minus 45 meters. So we actually provide a parameter that allows you to filter out based on accuracy. So if you don't wanna see things that are greater than eight meters in accuracy, you just put eight in the, as that parameter and we will just not consider those points at all when we're doing the um, matching. Some optimizations. So leverage Oracle's native spatial indexing for uh, spatial index for scalable spatial searches. Um, just giving you here the two statements to be able to create a spatial index. We will be providing some sample data in that very simple data model, a little sample um, Apex application that David's going to show you in a little bit. So all that will be prepared for you for you and, and the simple scripts to create this tracking data table populate it with some tracks and creating these indexes. So these are just the statements for creating a spatial index. 
create ordinary indexes too. Here, I'm gonna create one on user ID sequence, sequence. And if you've got lots of tracking data, you might wanna leverage other key scalable features of the database, like partitioning. You might wanna partition your tables by time. The key is all of Spatial's features and functionalities, including this one, leverage the key scalable and manageability features of the Oracle database. So here's the other optimization that I kind of mentioned before. We include this, this column in that simple data model. It's called data's number. And I did some profiling. So Oracle has a really neat thing. At least it lets you do what's called data arithmetic. So if you have a, a date, data type in Oracle, like January 1st, 2020, you can subtract January 1st, 2019 and get back the result in days. So that's what Oracle does, it's kind of neat. So the result for this SQL statement gives me the number 365. So the unit it returns back is in days. So what I found when I started building this API from profiling is that doing date arithmetic is a little more expensive than doing just plain numeric arithmetic. I saw about a 2x gain, so I decided, you know, let's put a column in there just called data's number, and all it is is picking some reference date that's prior to all your tracking data, something like January 1st, 2019 in my case, and basically taking your capture dates and subtracting this reference date and storing that value, that kind of referenced value as a, as a value in the table. So it's going to be days from a reference point. And it's to, to do that, basically update your tracking data, say set data's number equal to the capture date. So this is the capture date of your tracking data minus some reference date, in this case, January 1st, 2019. Commit, that's all it is. So now let's look at the API, proximity and time-based contact tracing, SQL API, very nice. So here it's got a, several parameters, but the bulk of them over here highlighted in gray are just, table names and column names. So basically you can use your own table with your own column names mapped to the ones I described before and you know, start using this API. So some of the nice, um, the, the input parameters that you're certainly the important ones would be what user ID you wanna do contact tracing for, the start and end time that you want your trace to occur from and to, the distance that you wanna look for contacts within, and then those other two parameters that I described earlier, the time tolerance and the chaining tolerance, and also the accuracy value. So all those are parameters to this API. And this API is now publicly available on every platform, every Oracle database platform by installing this patch number down here. A little SQL developer demo and before I say thank you. Let's go into a little SQL developer demo. And here's the actual API right here. And so that's the API that I'll be calling right now, highlighted in blue. And what parameters I'm gonna am I gonna pass? And I'm gonna say, let me do a contact trace for user ID number 18 from this start date to this end date. I'm gonna use a distance of 15. My table name is called track data with accuracy, and I'm not gonna filter out any values at all based on the accuracy of the data. Earlier, I explained that basically we can return the result as a single row, which would have multiple possible breaks in it if there were contacts in different times of the day, or I could return each segment as a separate row. To do that, all you do is you add this predicate. You either say segment or all equal to all, to get it back as single rows or segment are all equal to segment to get it back as multiple rows. So once again, these reports, what am I selecting out of this API? I'm gonna get back the in user ID. So I'm doing a trace on user ID 18. So it's gonna report back 18 is my input user ID. My output user ID, I may get back several rows, one for each one that's a contact. And then I'm gonna, the duration comes back how long they were in contact at the same time and space comes back in seconds. So I'm just gonna divide it by 60 to get the duration in minutes. And it's gonna also report back what the time range that that um, contact occurred in. How many times were there contacts? So if there was different times of the day, 1 p.m. and another contact at 8 p.m., how many times did that happen? And 
the geometry is optional as well. So you can add your geometry column here too. Let's just run one. Once again, you can run this directly from SQL. So SQL API, of course, my SQL developer, I probably have to reconnect. Sorry about that. You guys have probably all, all, all have seen that where SQL developer sometimes does that. No worries. Connect again. And run the SQL. There it is. So it says for user ID, ID 18, two hits came back. I got the out user ID is user 15 and 26. For user 15, I came back in four minute, I had a four minute duration. And for user 26, I had an 11 minute duration. Here it tells me how many times. And like I started to do earlier, you know, um, I had the one o'clock um, interaction and then the eight o'clock or eight o'clock in the evening uh, interaction. Same thing here. So nine different times they had contacts. We can actually look at the geometry associated with that. Or we can also break this up and say, let me look at it as, let me look at the individual segments. So I could look at the individual pieces and it shows me each one. So it broke down, for example, um, user ID 15 or 26 into the individual components. So user ID 26 here on the bottom had three times of the day that it had contact. One was a single point. So its start and end time was actually zero. It had a two and a half minute duration, another contact and a 9.17 minute duration. One more example that I wanted to show you. And my guess is, let's see if this session is connected as well or not. So there's also a way to do a contact trace of all the users in the table. For example, if I run this top part of this query, this is saying select the user ID and the min and max um, time for all of the all of the points in that user's track. And I'm going to group by user ID. And if I just run that piece of this query, Dan, I'm just doing a quick time check for you. So after this example, we should probably jump over to the Apex. Uh, yeah, this is the last example that I'm going to show. But thank you, David. Let's try this again. So reconnect in SQL Developer. So this top part of the query in part one basically gives me back all my, how many user IDs do I have in my table? So I have user ID 11, 12. So I've got actually 19 or 21 different users. So this is something called a, get rid of these results down here. that all right so this this query over here oh, sorry this is what i want to get rid of so if you look at the whole query it's basically query sub factoring so i've got the part one query up here that i just ran and then the bottom part of the query this is going to feed this part one query is going to feed into the api so for every distinct user id and start range start and end range it's going to be joining this part one table with the API and passing in the user ID and doing a contact trace for each of those 21 users using their start and end time. So if I go run this whole thing, it's basically doing a contact trace across all my users. So I had user input user ID 11, he had 21, uh, user ID 21 was a match, uh, user ID 15, and if they've got their several matches. And you can actually do queries like, let me filter out anyone so I might have some inaccurate data here. So let me filter out anybody whose accuracy is greater than eight meters plus or minus. And that, for example, brings my data set down to just a couple of users. And you could do things like this, saying I want to report back only the users who had contact and for more than five minutes of contact. So 
These are very powerful queries. You can easily find and write SQL to find contacts and, um, and add predicates like only ones that had a certain amount of duration. So I think with that's it. What the next step is, is to show you how to take this simple, simple SQL API and actually embed it into an Apex application and actually visualize some of those results. I'm gonna pass it over to uh, David. Awesome, thanks, Dan. Yep. And I'm going to now share the Apex app. And uh, Dan, maybe you can just confirm my browser is shared? Yes, it looks great. OK. So now, that was a lot of stuff. And you know, there's things Dan didn't even really have time to get to in terms of all the dials you can turn with the API. But the, the thing that we're going to show now is how you can just consume that API uh, in Apex. And so I'm just going to log into this sample application. And this is literally just consuming what Dan just, just showed. So I'm going to select a user, like user 541. We've got a distance threshold. Dan talked about distance. And I'm going to pick a start time and an end time. And we're basically just calling that API and then showing a couple things here. Uh, OK, what we have on the left is the result of that query that Dan described, where we have the, the that segment or all set to all. Basically, we're collapsing the results down to show us for user 541, distance of 15 meters, and all the other default values that are that are uh, uh, sent to the API. We know that user 560 had 20 minutes and 30 seconds of contact, and user 2261 had eight tenths of a minute of contact. And if we look at the result uh, in the map, that's showing us basically all the um, all the details. So if we come in here and take a look in blue, we're seeing user 541, the person that we're, we're tracking, all their positions. In red are the contact tracing results. And if I was to click on one of these, here is uh, some points that constitute four minutes of that overall 20 minutes. There was four minutes of continuous contact here. And then out here, there was 16 and a half minutes of, of uh, continuous contact where there's thresholds in the API to let you, that sort of let you describe how to sort of configure those time windows. What do we config, uh, consider to be continuous uh, contact? But anyway, this is showing you know, the, the first of those examples where, again, the blue is who we're tracking, the red is the contact. And as we adjust the parameters, you'll see things change. So we have these two results. If I bring this down to five meters, all of a sudden now, we only have one of the two users in contact and for a shorter amount of time because some of that original contact goes away when we narrow down that distance threshold. So we've basically changed the threshold and we now have both different time and uh, um, you know, point results because of the fact that uh, our threshold has changed. Now we can also switch over quickly to another user. I'll grab user um, 2661, it's a different, different path and we'll see where they went. So now we have a different user that we're tracking. Here's 2261 at a distance of five meters from the start to the end time, there were no matches at all. If we increase that to 10 meters, now we see that there are a couple of points of contact with another user. We zoom in here, we're gonna see where they were. So this one user, 541, had you know, a tenth of a minute of contact. If we bring that up to 15 or 20 meters, now we're gonna see there's one additional point uh, down here, which is another user that had only one single point of contact. So there's no duration, but as Dan described, the API will let you capture the fact that there was, this user may have just come from a, you know, uh, coming from a cross street and then continued, so there was only one point of contact. That, of course, can be filtered out, but it's captured by, by the API. So as we change our distance, time, thresholds, track different users, the API really is capturing both space and time in a, in a dynamic way. And then, of course, you know, this is Apex, so we can add all kinds of additional charts and reports that are gonna summarize this in the various ways we want. But the point is that you know, everything Dan showed with the API, we can consume in Apex. And um, so I'm gonna uh, turn it over to Karsten in, in just a moment. And, and before I do, I just wanna finish by saying, 
Uh, we took a look at the API. We took a look at uh, contact tracing. And then, you know, I'm just going to leave with mentioning, and these slides will be shared, that getting started with this, we have a, SQL, a live SQL tutorial that just goes through the fundamentals of these spatial queries, proximity queries that you can do just on your own. It takes about five or 10 minutes and you can get started. And then Dan mentioned the uh, patch number and we've got the, you know, the, the barcode for that, but it's a patch um, uh, on my Oracle support. And then the slides will also be shared. So there's lots of additional resources for spatial in general. And, um, and with that, I'm gonna stop and let Karsten describe how all this mapping stuff gets plugged into Apex. Yeah, I just wanna make one quick comment on uh, what David just showed. Um, so, so sometimes when David and I were looking at some results, on the map, it would look like two points were very close to each other, but it wasn't a contact match. And it's because the API truly does match both time and distance. So a lot of times we then go look at the point that didn't match and it was the next day, right? So it's truly doing matching, correlating both parameters. I'm sorry, go ahead, Karsten. Okay, so let me share my screen. And um, this was, uh, so you now heard um, a lot of, um, what you have in the database, right? It's fantastic technology with Oracle Spatial. It's part of your normal database. And uh, what we've seen is how this technology can do the very complex task of contact tracing. But I would like to take the opportunity to go a big step back with you, right? And let's get into some, to some very basic thing, right? Which probably many of you already had on their list before. So you have a table with coordinates and we want to have the map. Right here in the demo, which uh, David showed, everything was plugged together, right? Uh, you know where the data comes, came from. That was the API, which uh, returned the contact tracing results. And um, there was the nice applica Apex application page with, the, uh, with, with an Oracle Maps map um, being part of this page. So how can we get a map into our Apex page? And this is when we, when we planned this talk, I was thinking this is such a basic question, right? It's even uh, outside the scope of contact tracing. It's, 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 it's a super basic um, requirement. You have customer data, you have uh, supplier data, uh, 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 branch data, location data, and part of your Apex application should be a map. And I would like now like to take five minutes to just show you how you can deal, uh, how you can get to this. And you can get to this with Apex today. The first thing you need is to check out the sample applications and uh, install the sample geolocation showcase because in that sample application, um, we have a set of plugins, of Apex plugins, and one of these plugins is a map plugin. The background map, the map tiles come from Oracle's map server. And you can provide a SQL query, which uh, selects the features from the database which are displayed on the map. I did this before, like in the cooking show. So the sample geolocation showcase is installed here. So now we want to have some data. And for a nice and easy starting example, I pulled some earthquake uh, data from the internet. And that's an example for like a customer table from you, right? So we have an ID, we have a customer name, we have something, uh, whatever, a flag, we have a timestamp and we have latitude and longitude. So now we want to turn that uh, onto a map. And the first thing we want to do is because maybe later on, we even want to do spatial analysis on the table. So let's first turn those two number columns to a real geometry color. So let's add a real spatial data type here. And this is something on Dan's slides uh, where similar statements, there were the create table statements, and SDO geometry is the data type in the Oracle database, which is there for uh, spatial data. Okay, now I have an empty spatial data type in my table. Uh, let's now populate that. So this statement copies my latitude, longitude columns, long and let, over to the spatial geometry type, right? Um, and let me run that as well. And I get something valid. Okay, this worked. So we have 14,600 rows. Okay, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to index that data because when we are displaying that stuff on a map and the map window, let's say, shows the uh, US only or Germany only, uh, I want the map to only query features from the map area. So we need an index. 
and you have seen those statements in dance slides as well. So I don't need to talk too much about it. Let me just execute these and finally create the index. All right. So, and it's always the same uh, flow, right? Dan had it in, in, in his slides. Create a table, populate uh, with the SDO geometry column, populate the data, add the spatial metadata, that was this apex spatial call before, and finally create the index. That's always those steps. Very easy, very straightforward. Now we want to uh, actually use uh, the data. And I have an empty application here, and we also have a plain page here. Right, let me just show. So page designer shows an empty page, nothing on it. Let's have a look. It's empty. And now we want to display the map. The first thing you need to do is to get the map, the, the, the mapping plugin from that sample application to your application. Okay, how to do that? You go to the plugin section. And actually, I already did it, like in a good cooking show, but um, it's actually creating a new plugin. Copy it from um, an existing application, right? And then everything is already here. Here you would select your plugins, copy them over, and now the mapping plugin has been copied from the sample application to your application. We can now start using it. Back to page design. Okay, I will add a new region. And uh, the region is my map region. Not static content, and let me look up the map plugin. Where is it? Ah, there we go. Right here is the Oracle HTML5 Maps region plugin. All right, so then, ah, okay, well, it wants to have a SQL query. So, um, yeah, but what SQL query should I use here? Um, uh, let's have a look into the page designer hot text. So, and that's two actually, just as a side note, um, for every Apex component, right? You always see some hot text which gives you some clue about what SQL query shall I use here? And all, so what the map plugin wants to have is a SQL query which returns a set of named colors. And an example is also here. Let's copy that over. So now we need to adjust this a bit. And um, there was an ID column. So um, there has to be one ID column. It should be unique um, because that's just the primary key. Then we need the geometry column. It's also, um, if, if, your, if, if your column name is different, just uh, provide an alias. In our case, uh, the column is named geometry anyway. We need a style, right? So the style can be a color red as style. Then we need the info tip column. And the info tip column is what uh, the map will display when you hover over the, uh, over the feature. And that was our title column. So then let's use earth table. And let me also, this was 14,000 rows. That's way too much to visualize on a map. And uh, this earthquake service uh, registers every single seismic, seismic activity on the planet. So uh, it's not worth to show everything. So let's uh, just restrict that. What do we want to have? Let's say three, right? Earthquakes with a magnitude larger than three or lar equals to three shall be displayed on our map. Okay, that validates. Let's run that and it zooms out a bit. And here we go, All right? There you have the earthquakes on a map right in just a few minutes. As a final piece, let's just uh, really highlight the severe ones. And that's all a, a function of your SQL query, right? Case when Mac, let's say larger than five, then red. When Mac between three and five, then orange, else, come on, as style. Okay. And now we should get different colors. There we are, right. And here is the um, here is the um, the info tip which is being displayed once hovering over the map, and there you go. Right. So imagine the earthquake table, uh, 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 your customers table, your suppliers table, 
And the flow was the same when we built the demo, which David has shown before, right? The table was not a table. It was we were selecting the contact tracing API, which returned, guess what, as, uh, rows and columns containing the SDO geometry data types. So it's always the same. So you have the database, which contains all the spatial functionality. You can do all the uh, spatial lookups uh, within distance queries, nearest neighbor queries, contact tracing. And with Apex, you have the map plugin and the other Apex components, which allows you to build nice applications out of this. And that pretty much concludes my demo. I will stop sharing and head back to Joel. Uh, thanks, Karsten. Um, I have a question for you, Karsten. Um, is that plugin supported by Oracle? So that is the sample application right now. Um, we so far, I supported it all the time. And the plans of the Apex team are towards providing a native map plugin, right? So that you, uh, that you don't have to install sample applications and to use plugins. Um, we are not there yet. It's a planned functionality. I can't promise a version or a time frame, but that's at least what we are working on. And once that's there, uh, you don't even need the sample application anymore. Okay, great. You uh, uh, wait, but I didn't. I didn't get an actual answer to my question, right? <laughs> so you <laughs> talked about the future, and that was my second question: is why don't we make this a a native one? So if someone were to use this today, and there are issues with it, can they call up Oracle support and say, "Hey, that plugin doesn't seem to work"? I would say yes, they can. <clears throat> yes, they can call Oracle support. This will land. Uh, this will land at the end of the day. It will land at my desk, and I will work on it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, and, and I should point out is uh, um, we see greater coordination between the Apex and spatial teams uh, because in the past, I mean, no, no offense to Jim Steiner and the spatial team, it was a four cost option and we could never assume that it was there. But now that it's a part of every Oracle database, uh, it's very easy for us to assume that the spatial capability is there and we can do smart things that say things like, uh, oh, there's spatial data. So, um, you know, Let's, let's add an index for you there. Um, I don't think there are any other uh, questions. Uh, there's still some in, uh, they're coming in now in chat. Let's see. Um, so I don't know who this was for. Uh, let's see. From what version of Apex could you use Apex Spatial? That's from Sunny Carson. So I think that's to you. I think, uh, if I remember right, that was introduced even back in Apex 4.2 something, 4.25, 4.24. So uh, let's put it that way in all supported Apex versions. It's okay, available. Thanks. There was another one from Mark. Will you make it available for DB version 11.2.04 also? I, I think the answer to this, for, for this specific uh, package um, uh, for tracing functionality, I, I, I'm going to assume the answer is no, that it was uh, backported to 18C and 19C. Um, That's right. That's right. And, and you agree, David and Dan, that yeah. we're not going to backport this to 11.204, right? Right. Uh, Balaji asks, is this how Skynet finds John Connor's associates? Actually, good question. Don't know. Um, and uh, let's see. I think that's about it. How do we get uh, – so here's from Rajendra. How do we get user data into table longitude and latitude in Apex apps? user data into a table longitude and latitude in Apex apps. I guess I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, if you're asking where does the data come from, um, it comes from another source, right? It is, uh, um, no one typically is going to enter an individual person um, and a specific point where they're at and then a continuous stream. It's typically imported from um, some other source which captures this, right? Um, Mario from Tokyo. Oh, I think that was taken off there. Huh. Okay. Um, Rohit says, I'm using Apex 5.1 and Oracle has taken off support for flash chart. What solution do I have to move forward? Um, not sure that's a question for this topic, Rohit. Uh, if you wish, contact me on Twitter, DM me, uh, or mention me there. <laughs> that's separate from this uh, discussion. Um, I think that's about... It, there was one maybe for Karsten from uh, Francois. Um, uh -oh. getting, getting the maps to show in the plugin. 
from your local database instead of the e-location server. And um, so that's, you know, Carson can probably, you know, answer that just as well, but that's maybe um, confusing a little bit. E-location server is where the background map comes from and, um, and uh, you know, your database, whatever database you're using with Apex is where your point data is coming from. Uh, Carson, you could articulate that a little bit more in terms of how yeah, so, the button um, matches map. So uh, in this demo, uh, the background maps came from an Oracle mapping server, and the features which were rendered onto the map came from the local Apex database. Um, however, the plugin even allows to configure uh, the URL endpoint of your own Oracle Maps server. So you need to have an Oracle Maps, Oracle Map your installation. You need to have the map tiles, the map tile layers configured there. And once you have that, you can point the plugin to that Oracle Maps installation and use your own tile layers. That absolutely works. But the pre-configuration, so the, when, when you install the plugins, all the defaults use the Oracle Map Server because most people don't have their own Map Server. So uh, they are dependent on an external service. Okay. I think that's it for questions. I can't believe we finished early. Um, the one thing I wanted to mention is as smart as Dan and David and the spatial team are, um, they didn't just sit in the lab and think that this would be a good idea. Um, the development of this was actually done in conjunction with a real customer at their request. And um, the spatial team developed this superior solution, and um, it was so good, elected to include this in the native spatial product. So un understand that this was um, vetted and uh, developed in conjunction with a, with a customer. Um, as has already been mentioned a couple times, the patch for this is available today. And I really want to commend the spatial team for making this happen. I know that they work very, very hard uh, to get this ready for today, as well as in preparation for today's office hour. So um, our many thanks to them. Um, the replay and chat transcript will be available online in the next couple of days. And as a reminder, if you know of anyone who's just getting started with Apex, um, please feel free to invite them to our office hours next month on June 18th. Thanks, everyone, for your time and attention, and we wish you a great day. Bye.